Right now with a winter weather alert day coming within hours, we update a miserable day on the interstate in Rock County led to hours of gridlock. Plus from Memphis, the disturbing arrest video of Tyree Nichols is released. A family in mourning as another national conversation about police brutality begins. And word tonight of an investigation involving members of the Middleton High School football program as a head coach there steps down. It's all ahead on News 3 Now at 10. Well, thanks for joining us tonight. We saw some more snow out there today, but it is really tomorrow that we are keeping an eye on. We're expecting accumulating snowfall all across South Central Wisconsin, and that has prompted our weather team to declare an alert day. Several local communities, in fact, have already declared snow emergencies. So far, there are 10 of them, including Beloit, Janesville, McFarland, and Stoughton. And we have a full list that you can see at channel3000.com. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Gary Cadalti with our first warm forecast. Gary? Eric, it looks like the snow is going to cover much of southern Wisconsin during the day tomorrow into tomorrow night. It might arrive just a tad later, later maybe about mid-morning, but it should stick around a little bit later into tomorrow night. Time lapse from the WISC TV sky cam today shows just how quick some of those snow showers moved on through and dropped visibilities very quickly. That's what led to those uh, traffic accidents on uh, I-3990 earlier today. But you can see how skies cleared out as we headed towards sunset, and that's as the colder air starts to sweep in. This morning, snow racing off to the east into uh, Lake Huron and eastern portions of Michigan. But six-hour future track radar shows the next weather system spreading snow into southwestern Minnesota and central Iowa by early tomorrow morning, and that should be in Madison by about mid-morning. Winter weather advisories in effect for all of southern Wisconsin beginning at 3 a.m. for our western viewers, 6 a.m. for areas east of Lone Rock, and that runs until early on Sunday morning. Current temperatures are as cold as they've been all day, 19 in Middleton and Madison, 19 in Belleville, 19 in Oregon, 20 in Wanakee, but out to the west, a couple degrees colder. 12 in Viroqua right now, 15 in Camp Douglas, and then you factor in the winds, we're seeing wind chills as cold as two below zero in Viroqua and only one above zero in Camp Douglas. A sign of things to come. For tomorrow, or for tonight, look for variably cloudy skies. No snow until probably early to mid-morning tomorrow with a low of 14. Later on, I'll show you just exactly how much snow we should get and when it'll arrive. Gary, thank you. The Streets Division in Madison says the temps will be too cold for salt as they keep try to keep streets clear during tomorrow's system, meaning roads will be especially slippery if you try to travel during the day. They do anticipate a citywide plowing operation will be necessary. Hope we can have all of them plowed by tomorrow night. Weather was a factor in Rock County today as state troopers tell us snow, ice, and the whiteout conditions contributed to the crashes that closed the highway for nearly eight hours. McKenna Alexander had the fun assignment of being there all afternoon. She has the latest on today's backup. McKenna? Yeah, I'll be real. It was a mess out there today with hundreds of southern Wisconsin drivers late returning from their lunch break after a crash around 1230 this afternoon resulted in a massive highway pileup. You can see here on Wisconsin's live DOT cam that the north and southbound lanes on I-3990 are partially open near the Illinois border, but both of those cleared in just the last hour. Now, this video you're seeing is from a few hours ago, and as you can see, cars and trucks aren't moving an inch, and it stayed that way for hours to the point people were seen abandoning their cars and hiking up an overpass hill to be picked up by friends and family members. According to the Wisconsin State Patrol, at least one person was hurt in a multi-vehicle crash, which contributed to this afternoon's pileup. We have asked state troopers and the DOT for details on today's crashes, but have yet to receive additional information. So while the highway in Rock County has mostly been cleared, the area is still highly congested as cars are now backed up on our nearby side streets. Our team also witnessed several cars sliding off those icy roads. So as we continue bringing the latest traffic updates, be sure to stay safe, drive slow, and avoid the area if you can. All right, McKenna, and that wasn't the only mess. Down in southeastern Wisconsin, a multi-vehicle crash also shut down northbound lanes of I-41. This is Kenosha County, just north of the state line. Authorities say whiteout conditions there were a factor. At least six vehicles, including two semis, were involved in the crash, and at least two people were hurt. As we hunker down for tomorrow's storm, now is a great time to download our free First Warn Weather app to stay up to date on all things local weather on the go. And with all this new snow, the DNR urging snowmobilers to make safety a top priority. Already, five snowmobile deaths have been reported in Wisconsin this month. Those who died were anywhere from 42 to 68 years old. Four of the five victims were men. Those crashes remain under investigation. 
Developing tonight, the Middleton Cross Plain School District is working with local police there to investigate harassment allegations within the school's high school football program. This afternoon, we learned the football coach there has resigned. In a letter sent to families with students in the football program, district officials said they received information just over a week ago about some sort of alleged harassment on the team. A district spokesperson said the district couldn't share any further information about the nature of those allegations or who was involved. A man who assaulted U.S. Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick with pepper spray during the January 6th riot, sentenced today to 80 months behind bars. Julian Cotter pleaded guilty in September to two counts of assaulting, resisting, or impeding officers with a dangerous weapon. The day after the attack, Officer Sicknick died after suffering several strokes. There are protests sparked across the country tonight after officials in Memphis released footage of the violent arrest of Tyree Nichols, a 29-year-old black man whose death earlier this month led to second degree murder charges against five police officers. Law enforcement now bracing for the possibility that demonstrations turn violent, but the family is asking protesters to stay peaceful. Skylar Henry, following the story from Memphis, we do want to warn you the video is very difficult to watch. One. Highly disturbing video released by the city of Memphis shows the police beating of Tyree Nichols on January 7th. You might get sprayed again. The 29-year-old father was stopped near his home on suspicion of reckless driving. He died three days later. The five officers involved were fired and are now facing second-degree murder charges. More than an hour of footage was released that shows the officers tasing Nichols and then he runs away. At a second location, officers are seen holding him down and beating him repeatedly while he screams for his mother. And any of you who have children, please don't let them see it. Nichols' mother saw the footage earlier this week. And I want to say to the five police officers that murdered my son, you also disgraced your own families. Ahead of the video's release, the family asked the public here in Memphis and across the country to stay peaceful as they demonstrate. We do not want any type of uproar. We do not want any type of disturbance. Planned protests were held in cities from coast to coast, calling for police accountability and justice for Nichols. Indict, convict, send these killer cops to jail. CBS News has learned that investigators are searching for more potential video evidence from surveillance cameras in an effort to determine with more certainty what sparked the confrontation. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Memphis. Action taken against the officers happened more quickly than in past notable police brutality cases. Family attorney Ben Crump hopes that becomes the standard. And Madison Police Chief Sean Barnes reacting to the case in a statement. Barnes says, quote, as a police officer, I am angered at the unwillingness of my profession to learn from the past and the refusal to accept that we as police officers must protect all people, even those who are involved in criminal activity, end quote. Also today, the San Francisco Superior Court releasing audio as well as surveillance and police body cam footage showing the attack on Paul Pelosi this past October. Police say the husband of former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi was asleep in their home when suspect David DePape allegedly broke in and attacked him with a hammer. Authorities say DePape was motivated by conspiracy theories and was looking for the former speaker who was not home at the time. U.S. Second Gentleman Doug Emhoff visiting the site of the former Auschwitz Nazi concentration camp in Poland today as part of commemorations for the 78th anniversary of the liberation of the camp. He was at the site with the U.S. Ambassador to Poland. They laid a wreath at the site of executions known as the Wall of Death. Today, the site with its barracks and barbed wire and ruins of gas chambers stands as one of the world's most recognized symbols of evil. Tensions are mounting in Israel and the West Bank after a gunman killed at least seven people and wounded ten others at a synagogue in the outskirts of Jerusalem today. It comes a day after the deadliest Israeli raid in the West Bank in years that killed at least nine Palestinians. Police said the gunman was eventually killed by police. The attack, which Israeli police describe as a terrorist incident, underlined fears of an escalation in violence after months of clashes in the West Bank. And in London, dozens of firefighters worked to extinguish a large fire at a heritage-listed church overnight. About 80 firefighters battled to put out the blaze at St. Mark's Church in St. John's Wood. Officials said there were no injuries as a result of the fire. This church was built way back in the 1800s. 
wasn't immediately clear what caused that fire. The UW is establishing a permanent exhibit to address the history of the Madison campus. It is an extension of the public history project at the Chazen Museum, which was started by private funds and addressed what happened with student groups in the early 1920s that held the name of the Ku Klux Klan. The exhibit focused on acts of hatred and discrimination. The new public history project will take the findings of that first exhibit into future decision making on campus. University thinks it's really important not only to keep studying our history, but to really figure out how we institutionalize that history. How do we take the history and really spread it throughout campus so that people can learn from it and use it, um, and so that we can kind of make a more equitable university. It's been called the Rebecca M. Blank Center for Campus History, named for the former chancellor, should be up and running by midsummer. And new tonight, a Middleton ministry and chain of local grocery stores promoting food security and access for more than just Dane County's human residents. They're also looking out for pets. Today, a crew from Roundy's delivered nearly 13,000 units of premium cat food to Middleton Outreach Ministry to help the organization restock on a frequently requested pantry item. According to Roundy's, the donation is valued at about $18,000. And still ahead tonight at 10, Gary rejoins us with his full forecast, including more on that substantial snow accumulation tomorrow. But first, does your job make the cut? We break down some of the top gigs of the new year. That's next. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is coming this weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Rose and Rose of Spas, Hot Tubs and Swim Spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Wisconsin. It's easy to take for granted how we warm up. But what if you couldn't warm up so easily? For many, it's a reality they can't ignore. Working families. Elderly. Disabled and veterans struggling to keep their heat and power on in the dangerous cold of winter. If you or someone you know needs a hand up, our energy, water, and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safe in your home. No one deserves to suffer when we can help each other. The biggest and best RV event in the Midwest is back. It's the Madison Camper and RV Show and Sale. See a huge selection of RVs, camping equipment, and campgrounds all under one roof. Meet Gilbert Brown, Gridiron Great. Tickets are just $10 and kids are free. Seniors, you're welcome at half price on Friday. Experience the great outdoors at the Alliant Energy Center Friday through Sunday, February 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Get an F-150 with 0% APR financing for 36 months, plus 1,000 bonus cash and 500 accessories cash. DePaco Credit Union protects your well-being, supports you through life's many surprises. Because when our members love life, it makes a brighter community for all. DePaco can help you be well. Spa, spa, spa! The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is coming this weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Rose and Rose of Spas, Hot Tubs and Swim Spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. A local woman with no climbing experience tackles mighty Mount Kilimanjaro. What in the world have I gotten into? In a News 3 Now exclusive, Arman Rahman traces her path and shares her advice to others who dream big. Sunday at 10. You're watching News 3 Now at 10. Welcome back. New tonight. Pending home sales increased last month. First time that's happened since last May. According to new data from the National Association of Realtors, the data shows the pending sales index went up by 2.5% from November to December. 
but that's still down by 33.8% from a year ago. Mercedes said to launch a self-driving feature said to be even more advanced than what Tesla offers. The company's drive pilot system is what the Society of Automotive Engineers considers level three automation. That means the vehicle drives itself entirely and the driver does not have to pay attention to the road at all. It'll be available later this year. Tesla and other vehicles with similar technology only offer level two automation. The tech industry has seen job cuts recently, but there is still a high demand for people who work in software and data. Danya Backus reports on just what those jobs are. Sarah Curtis has a job you may have never heard of. She's a full stack developer. A full stack developer is um, a developer who works on all layers of uh, software. It also means she can work on all aspects of a website or application. Companies everywhere need these skills and full stack developers number one on the employment site Indeed's list of best jobs with rankings based on salary, availability and flexibility. It has a very handsome salary and just over half of the roles can be done remotely and in a flexible work environment. Indeed, Scott Dabrowski says that number two is data engineer with a mean salary of $135,000 a year. And number three is cloud engineer, which offers competitive pay and flexibility. In fact, most of the positions in the top 10 are computer related. So what this continues to show is that virtually every company today is a technology company. Every single company today does have some online presence to power their business. It also shows jobs evolving with the changing times. I found it very interesting that you don't see a job like physician or lawyer on this year's list. Those used to be two jobs years ago that a lot of people would go for. Sarah began pursuing her career after taking a computer science class in college. You can build something that will be used potentially by millions of people all over the world. Um, so solving problems at that scale is is really challenging, but also really interesting and a really fun space to be in. She's finding job satisfaction holding skills in high demand as companies increasingly rely on technology to conduct business. Don Yabak is CBS News, Los Angeles. And on this wintry Friday, today marks the last day of Salt Awareness Week in Wisconsin. Now, the city of Madison has been spending the week working with the group Wisconsin SaltWise and local experts to reaffirm the harms of salt pollution. It's a problem they've been covering for the past three years during Salt Awareness Week. One of the main topics of the week, road salt, and the city has been encouraging people to use less of it, pointing to its negative effects on the city's freshwater sources. Protecting our freshwater is really um, an issue that everybody needs to be concerned about, right? I mean, this is the water that we drink. It's the water that, you know, we might want to go out and play in, canoeing, swimming, boating, and protecting the critters that live in that water. An alert day in the forecast. For more details, Gary joins us now. And what do you think, like 3 a.m. when we're going to start? That's kind of when the alert day starts? Well, the, the snow probably will reach us now about mid-morning. It okay. looks like it'll be a little bit later than what we were initially looking at, but it will last a little bit longer mm -hmm. into tomorrow night. So the snowfall totals pretty much seem to be the same. Uh, the alert day for accumulating snow across most of southern Wisconsin, right now the thinking is about 2 to 5 inches during the day tomorrow. Again, this will be from about mid-morning morning through probably about six o'clock and then a little more at night. Um, I was thinking before about maybe a one to two inch snowfall tomorrow night might be a little bit more than that. Looks like the snow will stay pretty persistent through about midnight and then cut off pretty quickly after that. There also could be a mix of precipitation, some sleet or freezing rain for a time for areas south of Dane County that could limit snowfall amounts a little bit there, but uh, all of southern Wisconsin is going to be impacted by this system. In fact, winter weather advisories in effect for uh, about the southern third of Wisconsin, far northern Illinois, eastern Iowa and then farther to the west are winter storm warnings for heavier snow parts of western Iowa and parts of Nebraska. Uh, just a few flurries in northeastern Wisconsin just starting to see the snow creep into northeastern Nebraska and southeastern South Dakota heading toward Iowa and Minnesota and future track this is 3 a.m. still the snow back to the west a fair distance. Uh, last night it looked like the snow would be more in this area here so you can see it's it's a little bit slower in developing 9 a.m. Uh, moving into southwestern Wisconsin then continuing 
through the day on Saturday. Now, this is just a, a very later update, and it's showing the snow a little bit farther south. Uh, very interesting. Again, we get this new information literally as we go on the air for 10 o'clock. If this is the case, that would limit the snowfall amounts a little bit more, but some of the other computer models are keeping the snow going through much of Saturday night and then pretty much ending it early by uh, Sunday morning. Snowfall amounts are thinking right now about three to six inches of snow uh, through much of southern Wisconsin. Again, if this very new computer model forecast is correct, that might shift things south a little bit, uh, so we'll just keep an eye on that. Otherwise, temperatures are going to be very cold in the wake of the snow. Uh, high temperatures by Monday only in the single digits above zero and nighttime low temperatures by Tuesday morning close to 10 below zero. Good news is the cold spell should end by the end of the week and temperatures will be back to around normal. So we do have winter weather advisories beginning at 3 a.m. for our western viewers, 6 a.m. Uh, from Lone Rock eastward, and they run through 3 a.m. on Sunday morning for most of southern Wisconsin. For tomorrow, look for snow. Uh, it could be a little bit of mixed precipitation south of Madison, but about 2 to 5 inches expected by evening with a high temperature of 18. Future track, the snow coming in from the west, but again, it looks like it'll probably be mid-morning, continuing through the afternoon. Uh, again, if this very latest computer model forecast is correct, then uh, more of the snow would, would stay farther to the south, but again, this is only one of several computer models that we look at, and most of the other ones are still keeping the snow farther to the north. Notice the snow winding down by early on Sunday morning. Right now, we're thinking about three to six inches from Dane County southward to the north a little bit less. Again, if the new computer model forecast is correct, maybe shift the southward by about a county or so. Seven to 10 day forecast, eight for the high of Monday and down to eight below zero by Tuesday morning with wind chills down to 20 below zero. Good news is though, other than a few flurries on Wednesday and a chance of flurries Saturday and Sunday of next weekend, looking at very quiet weather and those temperatures at least getting back up closer to normal by next weekend. Scoring at will. Coming up in sports, how the Badger women used a big second period to skate past the Tommies with ease. That's next on News 3 Now. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. A prosecutor, now circuit court judge, Janet Protosiewicz. On the Supreme Court, I'll be a common sense judge. I'll protect public safety. I believe in a woman's freedom to make her own decision on abortion. It's time for a change. Can we really trust him with a car? Of course we can, Lindsay, with AAA auto insurance. Wait, AAA has auto insurance? We do home insurance, too. Switch and save on AAA Auto Insurance and expect something more. So walk away with Where will your new Chevy take you this year? Anywhere. Find new experiences. Find new roads. Well-qualified buyers get 2.99% financing on all 2022 Silverado 1500 pickups or get 1500 cash allowance on this Silverado with a 2.7 liter engine. Plus, current Chevy owners get an additional 32.50 total cash allowance. All these two for seven bucks every day. That big crispy boy can barely fit on the bun. Two of those things for just seven bucks. All these, we have the meat. Don't miss the new Lake Homing Cabin Show, January 27th through 29th at the Alliant Energy Center. New products and fresh ideas. You'll find everything for your getaway lifestyle at the Lake Homing Cabin Show, January 27th through 29th, Alliant Energy Center. I became an orthopedic surgeon for a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. For a lot of reasons. To help you take walks again. To ease your pain. To rebuild your strength. And at every step along the way, we take the time to answer all your questions. We're here because we care. We care about you. 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 They care about me. Sauk Prairie Healthcare Orthopedics, now offering robotic assisted knee replacement. Shop family owned Brothers Main for our large selection, low price deals, and free delivery on top appliance brands like Whirlpool, Maytag, and KitchenAid. From sales to install, we do it all. Feel great about your purchases and feel like family at Brothers Main. Introducing SAS Sauce and Shells, a bold new restaurant on Madison's Capitol Square. Combining the best of barbecue and shell seafood by Chef Joe Perkins. Add a little SAS to your lunch or dinner plans today. Open seven days a week. Can we really trust him with a car? Of course we can, Lindsay, with AAA Auto Insurance. Wait. 
AAA has auto insurance? We do home insurance, too. Switch and save on AAA auto insurance and expect something more. I'm voting for Judge Janet Protasiewicz for Supreme Court. She believes in our freedom to make our own decisions when it comes to abortion. Extremists want to ban abortion. Even in cases of rape and the health of the mother. Judge Janet Protasiewicz is the change Wisconsin needs. The Wisconsin women's hockey team started to turn things around last week with their sweep over Minnesota State. Now they're looking to break out the brooms again, but first things first, you have to start the series opener against St. Thomas with the win. The Badgers spotted the Tommies a 1-0 lead and then went to work. Vivian Jungles fires a shot on net and Casey O'Brien's there to deflect it in to tie the game up at 1. Now it's still tied in the second period. UW on the power play and Jesse Comfer cashes in. She sends it to the back of the net, part of a four goal period for the Badgers. They go on to win six to one, the final. Badger men also were in action tonight and things didn't go as well in South Bend. Wisconsin started in a two goal hole and fell to Notre Dame five to three, the final. It's been a good week for the Wisconsin women's basketball team. They got their seventh win of the season, and in the process, Julie Pashpishlova joined UW's 1,000-point club. The senior guard became the 28th Badger to hit 1K and the first player born outside of the U.S. to reach the milestone in program history. It's a big deal for Julie P., but she knows she couldn't score all those points without her teammates. It's not only my work, it's all, usually my coaches always trust me to uh, put me in a position where I can score. So without them and without a team, I wouldn't be able to score 1,000 points. Really happy for her to, to accomplish that. And as the first international player to do it, I think is also just an awesome uh, milestone as well. After missing the last two games, Max Klesman returned to practice for the first time since leaving Wisconsin's game against Penn State with 16 stitches in his lip and upper cheek after taking an elbow to the face. Klesman's status against Illinois is looking good for tomorrow. He's expected to play, and he'll definitely be a boost to this team that's lost five of their last six games. High school girls hoops, Janesville Craig hosting Sun Prairie West in a Big A battle. Maya Nicholson, fresh off joining the 1,000-point club, was added again for the Cougars. She takes it hard to the rack for two of her game-high 28 points. But the Wolves have a player named Micaiah Hawk, and she was dominant down low. Maria Outlay finds her, and she banks it home for the easy deuce. Some Prairie West goes on to win 71 to 63. Bucks playing so good against the Pacers in the first half, even Coach Bud smiled for a second or two. Time winding down in the first, and Wesley Matthews beats the buzzer with the triple. Milwaukee scored 45 points in the first quarter, and they were just getting started. Later in the half, it's Giannis muscling his way in for two plus one. The all-star captain finished with 41. Bucks get the win, 141 to 131. And on the mat, Wisconsin visiting Northwestern. This isn't what you want to see. Austin Gomez couldn't finish his match because of an injury. The Badgers responded. Garrett Model with a takedown there en route to a 13-4 major decision. And then a little later, it's Dean Hamity locking up the cradle and getting back points. He'd also win with a major, but the Badgers fall 18-17. We're back after this. You can save fresh perks, it's easy to get lower than low prices. For the win, earn fuel points on every purchase and save up to a dollar a gallon at the pump. With Pick and Save Fuel Points, all you do is win big, big savings. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. DePaco Credit Union protects your well-being supports you through life's many surprises. Because when our members love life, it makes a brighter community for all. DePaco can help you be well. Escape and
Edge or Explore SUV with 0% APR financing for 36 months, only at your Wisconsin and UP4 dealers. I want to ride this pony, but I suffer from low E. Millions of people are suffering from low energy, commonly known as low E. With my low E, I can never finish this trending dance. Low E has hurt my performance in the bedroom. I haven't been able to make the bed in years. Now there's hope. Planet Fitness replaces low E with Big E, which keeps you energized and glowing all day. Simply join through the free PF app. $1 down, $10 a month. Cancel any time. Deal ends January 31st. That's my boy. Sleep Life got you down? For a price that won't keep you up at night, Denver Mattress has you covered. And during the seven-day winter sale, check out the Easy Choice Plush or Firm. Now only $399.99. Save $100 on the Aspen lineup or get a $300 gift when you purchase any Tempur-Pedic. And score two Doctor's Choice pillows for just $69.99. Plus four years no interest and free shipping. Say goodbye to sleepless nights and shop Denver Mattress today. The easiest way to get the right mattress. Oh, the weather. What's the chance of rain tomorrow? Ooh, 80%. I make it rain. I make it rain. Speaking of making it rain, at Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison, we have an average 95% payout, which leads you to more chances of playing longer and more chances to win big. Play longer, win more, chances are you're gonna like it. Ho-Chunk Gaming Madison. With the Pick and Save app, no matter where you order free pickup, you get the same great deals as you get in our stores. So start your cart today. Whenever, wherever. Pick and Save, fresh for everyone. Channel 3000 Plus, watch from your streaming media player or mobile device. Well, before we go, some breaking news. Just getting an update on that massive pileup on the interstate in Rock County. Authorities say the initial investigation shows 85 vehicles roughly were involved. A total of 21 people were taken to area hospitals to be treated for non-life-threatening injuries. They say there was one fatality reported in an unrelated crash. The interstate was closed in both directions for about eight hours and just reopened within the past hour. And we've got a lot more snow potentially coming. Yeah, I showed you the earlier computer model forecast that showed the snow staying to the south. This is a different computer model. Take a look at that. The snow over all of southern Wisconsin pretty much through the day and into tomorrow evening before it pulls out early on Sunday morning. Take a look at the computer model forecast. This is the one I showed you earlier. This is what the raw computer model is showing. Those snow heavier to the south. Take a look at the computer model I just showed you. <laughs> More of a, uh, a six to eight inch snowfall across southern Wisconsin. So this is kind of our thinking, kind of in the middle. And I think that still looks pretty good for now. Uh, winter weather advisories for all of southern Wisconsin tomorrow and tomorrow night. All right. And of course, we'll keep you updated with the very latest, both on our app and online at channel3000.com. Thanks for joining us for News 3 Now at 10. Have a great and have a safe weekend.